everyone, welcome to Unicorn Dust Designs. If this is your first time here, my name is Sammy. Welcome to the channel, welcome to the community. Today, we are still on the Christmas train doing Christmas DIYs. So if that's what you're here for, then keep watching. Okay, so here we are. These are the Hobby Lobby wood rounds. They are plywood and they come three in a pack for $12.99. Now y'all do the math, three divided by $12.99 but not even $12.99. When they are 50% off, that is only $6.50 for three wood rounds. And look at, these are actually pretty thick. I was surprised. I thought they were gonna be more like the Dollar Tree wood rounds, but I knew I needed to try these out for y'all that cannot find the one inch ones in your hardware store. So we're gonna try them out a couple different ways here. So my first way, we are going to just put paint directly on here. I'm using my sponge roller and I'm using linen white chalk paint by Rust-Oleum. I'm gonna hit the front, the back, and the sides of this. Now I will say, make sure when you're doing this that you check which, there's a smooth side and there's a rough side. Make sure you're working on that smooth side. Now I am taking the stencil that I made. I will have these SVG files available for purchase on my website linked in the description box and a couple of these available for free for my members. So I size this to fit perfectly on this wood round. These rounds are 14.02 by 14.02. Now I'm gonna tape it off and silly me decided to get my stencil brush and stencil all of this. Why you ask? I do not know. I should have got my sponge roller and and eh, did it that way because <laughs> this took a lengthy amount of time when I, I could have just rolled it on and been good. So after I'm done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take our, this is Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl. Most of the stuff I use on my wood rounds you can find in my Amazon store link in the description box. Okay, we're gonna dry that down. Now I'm gonna take my second stencil and I'm gonna take Vintage Green by Folk Art and I'm gonna stencil that on. This was a smaller section so I didn't mind using the stencil brush. Um, and we're gonna let that dry. I do do two coats of this one, but I wanted to see how the different like paint versus stain versus sanding um, worked with these wood rounds. So hopefully I could give you a lot of information. I will say I would definitely use these again. So after that is done, I'm gonna go ahead and peel that off. Now, I'm gonna take this out to my garage. I'm gonna spray it with clear matte by Rust-Oleum. You just need a light coat, dry super fast, and this is going to help from your paints smearing together. Because then after we're done with that, we are going to clear it with spar urethane water-based satin. And there is a difference between using a spar urethane. Spar urethane is meant for outdoor use. It's gonna help protect your piece against UV rays. It's gonna help against the humidity, water, all of that stuff. So if this is going to go outside, that is why you wanna use spar urethane. Polyacrylic is meant for indoor use. So keep that in mind when you're clearing your pieces. Now I have always used a chip brush to clear my pieces. You can use a sponge roller as well because since this is water-based, it is just going to wash right out of whatever you use to apply it. Um, again, I've just always used chip brushes. So, you know, don't fix nothing that ain't broken kind of thing for me. So I'm gonna do two coats to the front and two coats to the back. I'm gonna do this with all of our signs today and I'm not gonna make you watch me do that multiple times. So just putting it out there for you guys. So you can see none of my colors are bleeding together. I They still look crisp and perfect. Now I'm gonna flip this around. I used one fourth of an inch staples and they did great they did not go through the wood round and like i said the these are so light you guys these are not like the heavy duty one inch rounds from home depot these are very lightweight these will be great if you like to ship your wood rounds um, or even just send some to family members 
and easy to like pack if you do craft fairs and things like that. So awesome. So I'm going to staple these on and then we're going to work on our bow. So I'm taking this little wood Christmas piece. This is the like wood stickers from Dollar Tree. I'm going to give that two coats with the vintage green. Then I'm going to take the tail end of this paintbrush and I'm just going to put some red dots on our tree and then clear it. Now I'm going to take what I call my cheer bow. It's a very basic bow. I've done it quite a few times on my channel and I'm going to stick that little tree right in the center. I wanted to put a bow on this, but I didn't want it to take over the piece because the fun part about this wood round is the whole cheetah Christmas tree vibe. So I'm going to staple that bow on and then we're going to add one more element, which you guys have seen me do before. I'm going to take some twine and I'm going to take my smaller beads. I'm going to twine eight beads on this, tying both ends off at a knot. Now make sure your twine is a little bit longer because we want a space in the middle. So you can see I put four on each side. There is a space right in the middle. That didn't work, you couldn't see that. So I'm just going to tuck this up under the Christmas tree. So I put some hot glue in there. I get my silicone spatula. I push that up underneath the Christmas tree and then it's just a cute little accessory. And I love the way this turned out. I, you guys know my whole vibe with cheetah. And if you are new, hello, my name is Sammy. I am addicted to cheetah. And I love the color combo. It worked out perfectly. Let me know what you think about this wood round down in the comments. Now, this one. Oh, I wanted to show you guys. That is a good way of saving your sponge roller if you know you're gonna be working on more projects and you don't wanna rinse it out. It lasts for a long time. So this one we're going to stain. So I'm using True Black by Minwax. I'm using my microfiber cloth and I'm gonna stain the front, the back, and the sides. I will say it absorbed the stain very well. I did apply my heat gun to it and it did actually dry a lot faster than the one inch rounds do. And I think that's because it kind of like sucked up that wood stain. So after I'm done with that, remember to make sure there is a smooth side and there's a rougher side. <laughs> the baby's in her jumper. So if you hear her, that's what's going on. All right, now I made this using my Cricut. Again, SVG's files are available on the website. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to line this up using my measuring mat. And this is how I'm going to space out where my Merry Christmas is going to go. So you can see I'm just holding, I don't have the tape down on the stencil. I'm just holding it above and I'm figuring out how, um, thick of a line I need to make to fit that Merry Christmas. <laughs> now, usually I would paint it first and then design around that, but I had already made this and it's super easy to do. Hi, Nug. Um, so again, you could see I'm using the lines of my measuring mat. Usually with the bigger rounds, they're glued panels of wood, so there are already straight lines there for you. These, obviously there's no lines. So I had to think of a way to get straight lines and I used my measuring mat, turned out absolutely perfect. Um, now I'm taking Crimson Red by Waverly and we are gonna give this two coats and then we're gonna move on to our next step. I did try a new painter's tape. I think this is just the Duck, is it Duck Command brand or Duck brand? And it actually worked pretty well and it's less expensive than the automotive tape that I usually use. So a great alternative. And I think I just got this at like Home Depot or something. And look, you guys, this is literally two and a half days later and my sponge is still wet and ready to rock and roll. <laughs> okay, break time. Okay, we switched over to the play mat, so let's see how long this lasts. All right, now I'm gonna lay my stencil. And you guys, when I'm saying stencil, this is stencil vinyl. This is not a reusable stencil. If you wanted a reusable stencil, you need to use like a folder divider or the Mylar um, film, which I still need to add to my Amazon store. You guys, I'm sorry, I'm so bad at this stuff. All right, so after I'm done, what we're testing out here is I wanted to see if the stencil vinyl was going to splinter 
the wood because that's something common that happens with plywood rounds and that's why I don't usually use them. So I did two coats of white linen over this and then I start peeling my stencil vinyl off. Now I will say just move with the grain of the plywood and you should not have any splintering. I did not have one splinter on this one. I will say right here, I feel like I haven't used white in a long time on a wood round. You are gonna see a bunch of flaking happen with white chalk paint. You do not want to leave that on your board. You can see I have a um, chippy brush that I'm using to brush away that excess because if you accidentally rub your finger on that, it's gonna be like smeared paint and you do not want that happening. Even on the bottom of it, like if you have flakes on the bottom, set your wood round on top, it's gonna smear like paint and then it's not gonna be pretty. Now, our bow here, I did three loops. I cut two slits on each side, tied it together. Y'all, I don't like this bow. I don't, you know, when you know how to do something and then you start thinking way too hard about it and then it comes out not, not what you're capable of. That was this. So I end up just doing two of the black and white ribbon and then the gold in the middle. I do not like this. I don't know if it was like the texture of like the ribbon or I was just overthinking it, but it's not the most, it's not my favorite bow I've ever done. So let me know what you guys think about the bow. I do like its simplicity, but I, it just, it just looks like an afterthought maybe. Is that what I'm thinking? I don't know. You guys let me know, do you like the color combo? And that's what's fun about all these wood rounds is you can make them any color you want. I mean, the, the stencil is there. You guys create what you want. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the video so far. So as you can see, we're doing more wood signs. Uh, I'm recycling some signs and I'm going to try out the wood rounds if I haven't already in this video from Hobby Lobby. I found the 14 inch rounds and I come, they come in like a three or four pack, 50% off, they're a great deal. So I wanted to see how they hold up and how they do when making the wood rounds. Cause I know a lot of people cannot find the ones at the hardware stores. So hopefully they work out for us and then we'll be doing some other ones as well. SVG files are available for purchase on my website. Link is in the description box. And then members, I will be shooting you a couple of them for free. So you guys, I hope you're enjoying the content and you all know the drill. If you're digging me, if you are digging this channel, if you're digging the DIYs, then make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. All of my links are down in the description box. We got a Facebook group, TikTok, Instagram. We got a little bit of everything. And you guys, let's go ahead and get back into the wood signs. Now with this one, I stained this one early American. Then I'm going to use my measuring mat again to get my straight lines across. I'm using this very thin automotive tape. My brother uses it for pinstriping. And I am going to put that every two inches. What we're gonna do here is create a faux like shiplap look without using a pencil or a marker. So I'm gonna carry that all the way up to our sign and you can space these out however you want i just thought the two inch looked good on this so after we're done with that i'm going to grab crimson red once again and i am going to paint that on top i end up just doing one coat because i don't mind seeing a little a little <laughs> a little bit of the wood coming through on this and then what do i do i don't know I don't know what I do, but anyways, um, this is the one, by the way, that I tried taking outside. I sanded with a 220 grit sandpaper and all it did was make the splintering 10 times worse. So do not sand these wood rounds at all. Now I'm gonna take that tape off. You can see how beautiful this looks, that wood popping through those slats. I love it. Now I'm going to take its Mary AF in here. Love, this ended up being my husband's favorite one. Surprise, surprise. And I'm gonna smooth that down and then we are going to take our transfer tape off. I'm using um, Transfer Ease vinyl tape 
And let me tell you, this is by far my most favorite transfer tape that I have ever used. It is like the perfect combination of sticky, but not sticky. Um, the only thing that doesn't work is usually if you have like white vinyl under it, it's kind of hard to see through it. But now I'm going to take that linen white. Woo, this looks like a hot mess, but I was just using what I had to cover it up. So I didn't make a mess even though it looks like a mess. So two coats of the white linen, then we're gonna take it off. Now this is one that I did splinter and that is because instead of going towards the left, like the grain, of, like towards the grain of the wood, I go up or like down on the I and the T and I end up splintering the I. I try and show it to you in this clip, but it, see it right there, see? You know, and you guys know me with my wood rounds. I want them to be perfect. So I end up just touching that up later. Now I'm going to take the second stencil. I'm going to use black ink. And for this, I'm just using a paintbrush and applying light coats with it. Ended up working out great. I didn't have any bleeds whatsoever. Then for our Christmas lights, I am going to use, I think this is nautical by folk art. And for each color, I'm going to do two coats. Then I take Maisie by Waverly. We're gonna do Pumpkin by Waverly. And then this green is, I don't know what color. It's like the brighter green from Waverly, starts with an M. I'm not gonna even try to pronounce it. And then you guys, again, we clear it, we staple the twine to the back of it, and that's it. I left this one in all its glory. I did not think it needed anything else. This would look good if there was like, um, wood cutouts of the lights up top to kind of pop out. I think that would be super cute, but I don't think it needed anything else here. Now our next one is gonna be a porch leaner. So many of you might've seen me already make this. I will attach the video down in the description box. And when I made it, I knew I wanted to put something on the opposite side. I just didn't have the time. So we're gonna do that now. I'm gonna take the staples out of the back. Super easy to do. I'm just using some pliers. I'm gonna take all the twine off. Then I'm gonna grab a sanding block and just kind of like scuff over the wood to get any like debris off because it was outside on my porch. And then I'm gonna clean that off. Now I'm gonna take some painter's tape and I'm going to tape off the edges. So we're creating basically a frame with our painter's tape. It's so easy to do and creates an upscale look without actually having to frame off your sign. So I do that all the way around. I'm using my finger as a guide and then I'm going to take my white linen chalk paint and we are going to do two coats of this. I do dry in between coats on my cool setting using my heat gun. I do have that heat gun in my Amazon store link. Now I'm going to take that tape off. Look at how crisp and beautiful that looks. And as I go around, you'll see the frame start coming together. Now I'm taking, and I got some things to say. So I'm taking my, this is, Arteza transfer tape. Don't like it. I, I, I was trying to use the remainder of it, but ain't going to happen. Then I realized for the Cricut, if you guys remember in the past when I've made porch cleaners, I had my silhouette and I concocted a, um, a measuring mat, a 48 inch. You guys look at how hard this took. Do you see this? I had to pull with so much force to get this transfer tape off. And as I was pulling it off, it was pulling up the permanent vinyl. So I do not recommend buying this Arteza transfer tape. But back to what I was saying, the Cricut, the Cricut 3, if you do not have smart vinyl, you cannot cut more than 24 inches long. So I was trying to use my mat that I had like rigged together for my silhouette and it would not accept it. So, so, you know, if you don't have the smart vinyl, you can't cut more than 24 inches, which I did not know. Um, so the only smart vinyl I had was white. And so that is why I'm using this white as my stencil because I couldn't use my stencil vinyl. Then I taped it off. I used crimson red and I did do two coats of this. I do not like the way that this permanent vinyl worked as um, a stencil. 
I got bleed through. I got some of the like paint chipped up with the vinyl just wasn't my favorite. Um, Cricut does make stencil vinyl. However, I did not have a long enough sheet to cut this length. So hopefully that helps some of you guys out for future reference. All right, so now we're gonna peel that off. I waited until it was dry. And then right here, I'm like already like, oh no. And this is my sign, so it wasn't like, oh my gosh, horrible, but it probably is a sign I wouldn't have sold just because I was not happy. And it does look rustic to somebody that doesn't do signs. They probably wouldn't even notice, but for me, I notice. So now I'm going to take that twine that we took off. I'm stapling it to the side, which I really didn't have to do. I was just trying to find a way to cover up the staples, but we end up putting a bow and greenery on this anyway. So anywhere you put the staple, you're just going to have to put the greenery or the bow around that. Sorry about this awesome view I'm giving you guys. So make sure you wind that up super tight. Now I'm taking um, some ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I'm creating three loops. Once I do the three loops, I fold it in half. I'm going to cut a slit on both sides, making sure not to go too far in. After we do that, I grab about five more inches of ribbon, and I'm going to hot glue a cylinder shape together. This is gonna be our middle. I'm then gonna take a zip tie, layer those on top of each other, and then I'm gonna squeeze that zip tie as hard as I can, and then I fluff it out, which you don't have to do because we're just gonna flip it back over and flatten it anyways, but you know, work harder. And then I'm gonna hot glue, this is just a hair clip to the back of this. And I added a Hobby Lobby pick that I think was like 250 and it, oh my gosh, you guys, look at how perfect that pick is. Oh my gosh, looks so good. I love the bow, goes with the red. I love the saying, which I don't even think I shared with you. It says, all roads lead home. That would be, this saying would be so cute with like red truck ribbon, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired you and I hope it gave you some like tips and tricks using other wood rounds um, instead of the, the hardware store ones. So I hope you guys have a good week and I look forward to reading your comments. Hello, 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 hello. How is everybody doing? Uh, today is gonna die. All right. Can I get my energy? How do you like my shirt I made? Cute, right? I like them real thick and sprucey. I was gonna say juicy, I was. <sighs> Mo, don't look at me like that. Is it too early to wear this like out in public? I don't think so. I'm already watching Edward Scissorhands, okay? Edward Scissorhands is a Christmas movie to me. Okay, I said it. <laughs>